All right. I'm going to give it a minute to come up because I was late and having a couple issues. <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome. If you can hear me, if you're coming in, I can see somebody is joining us. I'm going to give it just a few minutes to upload. Oh, interesting. It looks like I have two things on here. Let me see if I can delete one really fast. Sorry, guys. Uh oh, hello. Welcome as you're coming in. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. I was trying to do this on my new laptop, but I did not give myself enough time to figure it out. So <laughs> that didn't work. Okay, I'm deleting this other one. Delete forever. Okay. All right, guys. We're about to get started. We're just giving everyone a chance to find the video and come get on and for me to pull it up so I can see the chat. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, welcome you guys. Happy Sunday, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. If you don't already know me, if you just came here oops, for the first time, um, now it's crooked. So I am a knit and crochet designer, a YouTube podcaster. I love making knitting and crochet videos and hyping up knitting and crochet. It's my favorite thing to do. So welcome here. If you are new, I've got lots of passion. Today we're just hanging out, talking about knitting, knitting together. I've got some questions to answer that I got from you guys on Instagram, and I will answer your questions live if you have any. So as you're coming in, just say hi. Um, let me know what you're working on if you're knitting or crocheting or doing something else. Um, also let me know where you are coming in from. Okay, hello Heather and Courtney and Rebecca. Let's see who else is here, Katie. Um, hi from South Carolina. Hi from New Orleans. Awesome. Welcome, you guys. Thank you so much for coming in and chatting today. I am so happy to do these uh, YouTube lives once a month. They're so much fun. I love getting together um, and chatting with you guys. Okay, it looks like Katie is working on a crochet shawl and you're coming in from Georgia. Um, Kat is in the Bronx, New York, and Hoping to work on some baby booties. Awesome. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Lucy from the UK working on a V-neck boxy. That's exciting. Um, working on a scrappy washcloth coming in from Nebraska. Um, dropping in from Sacramento, California. Hi from Maryland. Okay, it's starting to go fast now. I'm going to try to get as many of you guys as I can. Hi, Maddie. Okay, working on some toe-up socks. Hi from Missouri. Just started Andrea Mowry sweater. Hi from North Carolina, working on some socks. Um, I see a question from Karen, um, working on a kimono design. Ooh, that's exciting. Um, working on a lounging top. Hi from Maine, working on a shawl. Hi from Massachusetts. Awesome, welcome you guys. Thank you so much for coming in. Again, say hi in the chat. Um, the chat will be available like replaying. So just remember anything you say in there will be replayed along with the video. So not that you would say anything like you wouldn't want people to know, but just letting, just making you aware that that does get saved. Okay, um, let's see, working on, casting on a second sock, picking up stitches for your second sleeve on your weekender. Oh, that's a productive weekend. Working on the green gable socks. Hi from Albany, New York. Crocheting the incendiary tank. Okay, I haven't started mine yet, but I still wanna make it. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't start on it. I've been working on socks. I'll show you guys in a second. Um, working on a scrappy project today, making a squishy dot blanket in Central Texas. Working on some socks for sock. Oh, so you'll be ready for sock week. Awesome. Hey, Linda. Linda coming in from mm, Leipzig, Leipzig, Germany. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> working on the sorrel sweater. Okay hand winding yarn for sock sock week shark week awesome okay well again welcome you guys for coming in today i have some knitting too i've been actually i've done quite a bit on the sock just this morning so i am working on 
sock week socks currently because I am filming, oh, I've put my needles away weird. I am filming a um, survival guide for you guys. So kind of showing you how it is possible to knit a sock in a week and like how to break it down and just how I knit like everywhere in order to get this done. So I'm gonna knit a little bit today, um, but, oh, can you hear Toaster? <laughs> Toaster is getting dropped off right now and Kent and my mother-in-law, they're gonna go drive around and catch some Pokemon and then I'm gonna go join them. So I'm, I apologize if there's extra noise for a little bit. But I just started um, right here on this sock today and I am trying to get through the entire foot of this sock. So I, again, am working on my sock week socks now <laughs> instead of sock week because I am recording that video for you guys. I will still knit some socks during sock week because I should have plenty of this yarn left over. So if you, oh, if you um, don't know, sock week is a sock make along that is going to be coming up here really soon. I think we're about two weeks away, August 9th. I'm really excited for it. You don't have to use the Sock Week yarn in order to participate. Um, so if you're just not hearing about it, you can still join in August 9th. But we've got two dyers. We have Malia made it and hers is the self-striping. So I'm working on that one too. And then Molly Klein Design. And then these cute markers are from Tia's Terrific threads. So I have all the links in my um, like Instagram bio and my past podcast episodes if you want to go find out more information. But anyway, yes, that's what I am working on right now is knitting socks, which is good because I have four pairs of socks where I've only knit one sock on them and these are two of them. So now I've got the second sock going and then I have some other ones and that's just like super, super weird for me. I usually will knit I used to always knit my socks in tandem, like toe, toe, foot, foot. But then now I do usually like one entire sock and then the next entire sock and finish the pair before I start the next one. And this year has just been weird for me. So, all right, let's see who else is coming in. Awesome, okay. Oh, hey, Kate, welcome. Um, let's see, waiting for your DPNs to arrive today. Helical knitting is not your friend. Oh no. Oh, and I remember that somebody just asked, what are my favorite needles for socks? And they are the Chaigu Red Lace. So they're metal needles, but they have this red lace cord, which I'm, I know my, my lighting is like not the best today. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, red lace cord because it's just doesn't kink. And these are the needle tips. But I love these just because I really like them, but it's also, they're also really affordable um, as far as need, knitting needles go. And they are really accessible because you can, like I know I can get them in my local yarn store, but they are also sold on Amazon. Not sold in craft stores, at least that I have seen. Okay, and I saw another question. We can crochet socks for sock week, right? Yes, absolutely. I would love if some people would crochet socks because I don't know how to crochet socks. I'm hoping to try it. Um, but I think last year was our first sock week and I didn't, I don't remember seeing any crocheted socks. So it'd be really cool for several people to crochet socks this year. I'd really like to see that. Okay, hi Toaster. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, we, uh, we dropped him off yesterday and so he had a sleepover last night. Actually, I have an adorable picture I need to share on Instagram of toaster and my mother-in-law's dog in the bed with like the covers over them. They're so cute. Okay, Karen asks, have you used nine inch circulars for socks? I have, I actually really, for about a, a year's time, that was my preferred way to knit socks was on nine inch circulars. Now I still needed my like 32 inch circulars to do the toe and the heel, um, but for those just tube parts of the socks, I did like using nine inch circulars um, until they started to really hurt my hands. And so I have since stopped using them, but I think they're a great method. It's just, it just depends on your preference and your hands. Okay, Kate says, I never wear handmade socks, so I don't know, but I'll definitely be following everyone's journey. Yeah, you should follow our journey, it'd be fun. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Hi from Newburgh, Indiana. You're planning to crochet a pair, Sarah. Okay, good. I'm so excited. Um, okay. I feel like this is a question about helical knitting. 
your cord isn't long enough, 32 inches versus 40, the needle part is longer than you thought. Trying to gauge whether you should spend the money on the full chai gu set. Hmm, I don't know, I can't answer that question for you. I think you guys are talking to each other about that, but if you love the needle, like if you have several sizes of a needle, then it might be worth the set, if you love them. Okay, so this is just a casual knit chat. <laughs> as I like to call them. Um, so we're just gonna hang out and chat for up to an hour. Usually they do last an hour, so probably two o'clock here in Central Time. Um, but I will just be answering questions. If you have them, put them in the chat, responding to what you are asking, probably going off on tangents on my own because <laughs> I always have stuff to say. Um, but this week, in the love and stitches world it's going to be a little different i'm starting back to work this week um so no video on tuesday um, which is kind of good that like there's a video sunday so i feel like okay at least there's still two videos technically this week but no video on tuesday this week just a podcast on thursday um and what else oh but next tuesday will be the sock week survival guide so that's going to be a really fun one i'll make it a premiere um, I have to see what my work day looks like. I'm hoping I can still do daytime premieres like at lunchtime, like what would be my lunchtime. Um, so hopefully that will work for some of you guys as well. Cause the premiere videos are similar to this where I have a pre-recorded video, but the chat is live and then I can be in the chat. So that's a lot of fun. If you can ever make a premiere video, it's really fun. Okay. Modest Kim, this is my first time tuning in. Are you a full-time knitter? Is it possible to make knitting a full-time career? Okay, well, I am a full-time knitter. <laughs> I feel like many of us would say that. I knit all the time. But no, I my full-time job is not knitwear design. Um, I am a teacher. I This is my seventh year. I'm going into my seventh year of teaching. Um, so that is my full-time job. But my side hustle, if you will, is um, knit and crochet design and then also YouTube. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm working to actually make YouTube be my full-time job because for me, it is more lucrative than knit and crochet design. Um, but I know a lot of people that have made knit and crochet design their full-time job. It just depends on, on what you want to do. So it is possible, but it can take many, many years. I'm definitely not to the point where I can quit my full-time job yet. And I have been doing, I think I published my first crochet design in summer 2018. So I'm just coming up on two years. So it just depends on one, I guess, like, I guess if I had more time, I don't know. It just depends on your journey, but you can definitely make it a full-time um, career if you are able to. Okay, Cindy is weaving in the ends of her sweater because you finished it this morning. So did you finish the sleeves too? Because I just, I thought you had sleeves to go and I saw the body was finished, but you're done with the sleeves. That's amazing. Okay. Hi, Lainey. Welcome. What are we doing? We're just chatting. You can, when you're coming in, just say where you're from and what you're working on if you want to, but you don't have to do that either. <laughs> We're just hanging out and chatting. I am just looking at the chat right now. I haven't started answering questions from Instagram, but I will get to those. Oh, and I am knitting right now on my sock. So you can't hear the needles, can you? I hope not. <laughs> okay. Kim says you will be a full-time knitter. I'm going to subscribe. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing. Hi, Allie. Welcome. Okay, Cindy. Cindy was working on a sweater. She finished the sleeves. They just needed six garter stitch rows. Oh, well, that is fast. That's awesome. Okay, Lainey from Alabama working on your scrappy blanket. Wow, you had a hard time spelling scrappy there. <laughs> I love that when I'm trying to type, when I'm trying to text with somebody and I'm like, just so excited. I want to get it typed out fast. And then I mess it up like four times and just keep sending them messages. I love that. Okay. I know it's scrappy Sunday and I used to be like committed to scrappy Sunday. I would always work on my scrappy projects, but that did not last very long for me. 
I should get back to that. I did really, really well when we did make 30 for 30 at the beginning of the year. I think those short bursts are good for me. Like I can commit to 30 days of doing something for 30 minutes. But that like every single Sunday, always, I don't know why, but I just, I don't, I don't do well with that for some reason. <laughs> okay, uh, hi Kathleen coming in from Central New York, working on the classic bottle cozy, yay! Um, Steph from Iowa, sorry, my computer is down here. That's looking really awkward when I look down like that. Um, hi from Iowa, currently knitting a V back T. Ooh, that's really fun. Actually, I'm gonna set my computer up higher here so that I don't have to keep um, moving it down. Let's see if I can do that without making, this is my, this is my table right now. It's a bunch of Legos that my husband is working on. <laughs> uh, he got a bunch of Legos for Christmas because he is a child. I'm just kidding. I can't say that. I have so many things that are fun that I do and silly that are like that. Okay, this is better, right? Now I don't have to go like that. <laughs> okay, hi from Virginia Beach. Your nails match your knitting. Heather, thank you for noticing that. I did that intentionally when I picked out my nail polish because I knew I was gonna film Sock Week this week. Um, usually I paint my nails on Sundays, or um, Sundays are Mondays usually, like the beginning of the week I changed my nail color. But, um, so I did that last week and then I didn't start filming my Sock Week video until Friday <laughs> or Thursday I can't remember but yeah I think although my nails are doing really really good this is just regular polish um, so I might keep this this color on a little longer okay hi from Nashville hi hi working on actual work right this minute but current project is a Disney granny stripe blanket oh, I love it well I'm glad that you can like chat or listen while you're working makes it a teensy bit better I hope Okay, um, let's see. What happened to my scrappy blankets? Um, they're just hanging out. I have my granny stripe one, which I've worked on at least in 2020. Um, I have put some time on that, mostly in January and February. And then I have a knitted one. Um, what is that one called? You guys are telling me, I know right now. Um, cozy memories which is like a mitered square blanket that I haven't worked on in quite a while it's very small but I'm, I'm not planning to tear it out I'm just I'm okay with it lingering and then I have my third one is my scrappy granny square blanket and that one I have been really disciplined with every year for Advent for I'm sorry for Christmas with my Advent calendars I've added a square every day or made a square every day I've not put anything or assembled anything yet um, but that one just hangs out until the next December so they're doing okay <laughs> but I'm not working on them right now okay more people from Texas hi from El Paso hi um, okay you're sticking with make 30 for 30 every morning and loving it. That is so great. I love that. And I have seen um, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady. She is doing 30 minutes on, I think, a particular sweater project every morning. And I think that that's a really good idea. I, I have been, um, every morning I have been listening to a book um, because I'm doing a Harry Potter um reading challenge and I'm on the last book and that's been really good for me but that's going to end before I go back to work so my morning routine will be a little bit different okay Melissa says she's with Kent on the Legos bring on the Legos they are a lot of fun I like to do the ones that are really small that you can like sit down and do in like an hour um, but I don't I haven't really like he has a, a full stadium replica like I don't want to do that that's a lot of work Okay, let's see. Um, Legos are not silly. All right, let's see. Uh, you should start matching your nail polish to your knitting project. It will bring you lots of joy. <laughs> if you have as much nail polish as me, you can do that. I can't believe you've been out of college for seven years. Me neither. What's happening? Well, six years, because I'm going into my seventh. <laughs> if that makes it any better. Um, good evening from Germany. Yay, somebody else from Germany. So exciting. Actually, I think we have three people here from Germany right now. I, 
I keep track of that in my head because I love that YouTube live helps us like be with people from around the world. I think that's so cool. Um, are you planning to add another year of Advent minis? I am. I have the same dyers. Um, I ordered my Advent calendar in April or something. I mean, it just gets earlier every year. Like it's closer. I ordered it closer to the previous Christmas than to the Christmas that I'm going to crochet the granny squares, which is so funny. Um, but yes, I get my Advent calendar from Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations. Actually, they, they work together to create the colors, but like half are from one and half are from the other. They're a mother and daughter. They're, mo they're mother and daughter, but they have their own separate yarn dyeing businesses. And so I kind of alternate, like one year I'll order from one of them and one year I'll order from the other one, but it supports both of them. Um, so yes, I have another one coming. And the reason I keep getting it from the same dyer, dyers is that it's Harry Potter themed and it is like each year at Hogwarts. So we're on the fourth year at Hogwarts, I believe this coming year. Yep. Okay, let's see. Christy has banned Legos in her house. I'm guessing you have stepped on one too many because that hurts a lot. That's why, that's a, one of the many reasons why I always wear shoes. <laughs> okay. Um, that still makes you feel old, Lindsay, that I've been out of college for six years. Oh, do you mean only six years? Or I thought you were saying that's a long time. <laughs> only six years. Yeah, I know. And Oh yes, you're starting college in just a couple weeks. I'm so excited for you. That's a really fun time. It is a strange time to be starting anything right now. So I really hope that it's still an amazing experience. Okay, you like this Advent thing. You saw it here and on other podcasts and got hooked. Now you're awaiting two Advents from Malia. <laughs> I, um, Advents are you know, they obviously they're a good chunk of change because they're a lot of yarn and that can make it hard for some people to um, get an advent. But actually I like that. I like that the advents can be purchased early on in the year so that it's not a, um, I don't know if burden is the right word, but like a financial strain at actual holiday time because that's when I am, you know, I think most of us are more strapped for money because we want to buy gifts for people. So, you know, you buy yourself a gift at the beginning of the year and then you can save your money and buy other people gifts for the holidays. <laughs> so I do like that. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, you have three kids and you broke your ankle last year. Was it because of Legos or just toys in general? But that's really terrible. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, broke your leg on, or leg, ankle on Legos. Your Lego on ankles. Okay, let me, I need to pull up the questions from earlier because you guys asked some really interesting questions. I mean, you always ask interesting questions, but this time you guys asked questions, um, a, a lot more proportionally questions that were not knitting related. Um, I always say, I was t telling my family, I'm like, they asked personal questions and they're like, they did? I'm like, okay, not like too personal, just like about personal things, but not too personal, <laughs> just not about knitting. So let me get those pulled up so that I can start to answer those. All right, let's see, tile floor and Legos. Oh my gosh, so you you stepped on it and then did you slip too? <gasps> That's so terrible. Okay, Kelly says last year she did an Advent mini swap with a couple of ladies. We swapped scrap yarn. It was a fun way to have an Advent without spending all at once. I love that idea. And especially if you do use, um, cause I feel like when I think Advent, or scrappy projects, I think fingering weight yarn. I know that's not always the case, but um, if you do knit with fingering weight yarn a lot, and then you know you can do an advent with fingering weight yarn, you can wind off your scraps into like 20 gram balls and then trade them with your friends. It's always really fun. Okay, cool. All right, I am going to grab a question here really quickly. Oh wait, hold on. More information. Broken ankle meant you get to do a lot of knitting for Christmas. Is your ankle broken right now? 
you don't have to answer that if you don't want to, but it almost sounded like it was broken now. Okay, let me pull up, grab a question here from Instagram and then I'll come back to the chat. And, and again, if you are coming in um, right now, go ahead and let us know where you're um, coming in from, what you're working on. And then if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And if you ask me a question in the chat and I don't answer it, it's probably because I missed it. I just didn't see it. So feel free to ask it again, um, like so that I can see it and answer it. I'm not trying to ignore you is what I'm trying to say. All right, so one question, I'm just gonna grab the first one. What are good quality tools or good quality yarn? So that question I'm going to half answer because first of all, I'm planning to do a both a stash tour and a like tools I love video separately. Not saying that like everything that I use is good quality <laughs> because I feel like quality is a little bit um, subjective. Is that the right word? Like it depends on what you're looking for. Um, sometimes I'm looking for something that is fitting my budget. And sometimes I'm looking for something that is really washable. And sometimes I'm looking for something that it feels like I'm treating myself. So, it, you know, quality kind of is relative. I don't know if that's the right word, um, but I, I am going to be doing a tour through my stash and showing you a lot of the tools for knitting and crochet that I love. So that information is upcoming. Um, but I would say if you're looking for like quality items, um, as a general term, like what is quality? I would say natural fibers are going to be t tend to be thought of as more qual quality over man-made and synthetic fibers. We know that that's not always the case. Um, things that have a higher price tag, <laughs> a lot of times are thought of as more quality. So hand-dyed yarns. Um, I know for me that I really do love hand-dyed yarns and natural fibers. So for me, that, that does mean higher quality because it's just a preference for me. Um, and then as far as tools go, a lot of times, I do have an opinion on this actually. Um, I have tools that I love from craft stores and then, but I also, those are usually like um, crochet uh, hooks um, and some other accessories I love from the craft store. However, I have, I don't have any knitting needles that I love from craft stores and maybe it's just the ones near me, um, but all of my knitting needles are from like actual knitting, not, why am I saying this so weird, are from brands that you cannot get in the craft store. Maybe that's just me though. So a lot of times when, I, when people are unhappy with their knitting, I'm like, okay, maybe you need to grab a tool that's not from the craft store because these are the ones that I really love and are comfortable for me. So I um, really like knit picks for my knitting needles and they are not expensive. Um, and then I like chai goo. So there you go. That's, that's a semi answer to, to the quality question. I'm sure we have lots of people telling us what they love to use for sure. Okay. Um, okay, you broke your ankle last year. Okay, good. <laughs> Hello from Central Valley, California. Working on a cozy memory blanket for Scrappy Sunday. Hi from Pennsylvania, knitting on vanilla socks. Um, have you ever, would I ever cut my hair super short or shave my head? No, I probably wouldn't shave my head, but I have cut my hair short several times. I've donated my hair many times in the past. Um, hi from Canada. You were knitting your first ever afterthought sock. That is so exciting. Okay, Lindsay says she totally agrees about craft store knitting needles. Yeah, I, I think the high, the best ones that I've ever gotten are um, Clover brand, but again, they're just a little too, um, they're not sharp enough on the ends and the cord really bothers me, but I have used Clover before. For a long time, I used Clover. Okay, uh, hi from Yuma. Arizona working on a sweater and making face masks. That's awesome. Okay, um, we like Addy Turbo Needles. Those are a great quality needles. Needle. <laughs> Hi from Vancouver, Washington, working on short socks. Somebody else has been sewing face masks. Awesome. Okay, guys, if you have questions, let me know. I'm gonna go back and grab another Instagram question. 
Okay, this question is how do you do waist shaping on garments? Um, so I don't have a ton of experience with that. I have in a few sweaters that I've made that were top down, I have added increases from the waist to the hip. Um, so I would say that's waist shaping, right? Um, but I don't have like a ton of experience in different types of sweaters or tons of sweaters, to be honest. But the basic theory would be like from the waist or from the armhole to your hip. Like I like to make a line. So that's just an increase, an even increase out. So I'll pick a size of sweater that fits my bust because that's the smallest part of me. And usually if it fits my bust and has no increasing, it's gonna be way too small once it gets to my hips, like way too small. So I need to add some stitches. So I will then measure my hips and look at the schematic on a sweater and see what size that is. So let's just for simplicity say, my bust is a small, I cast on a small, I knit a small, and then the hip measurement that fits me is a large. Honestly, that's a lot of the times what it is, two sizes up. So I will go and I'll say, okay, I have 100 stitches, probably not, but 100 stitches on the bus, and now I need to get to 200 stitches. Again, these are crazy numbers, but then I will figure out over, let's say, 15 inches, I need to increase 100 stitches. How can I do that, like, evenly? Because typically you'll get two increases on each side of the side seam for four increases in a row. So then I'll figure that out and I'll be like, okay, I need to do um, 100 stitches is a lot. It would not be 100 stitches, but I, let's just say I did some math on whatever I needed to increase by. And I'm like, okay, every um, seven rounds, I need to increase four stitches and I will go from 100 to 200. That was really terrible, inaccurate math, but that's like basically what you need to do. So figure out, how many stitches you need to increase and then figure out how long you have to do that, like in inches or centimeters or rows, whatever. And um, that will let you know like how many rows you need to do that. Mm. If you want to get some expert advice on that, I took a class from Amy Herzog and I think in her books, she talks a lot about that and that's how I learned how to do that. All right, let's see who is coming in. Um, Let's see. Oh, this is a good question from Irina. Um, with the quality question, would you rather have good quality yarn to work with or good quality tools? That is a really great question. Um, what would you guys say? <laughs> good quality yarn or good quality tools? I, I think yarn because like, if a tool is not good quality, it doesn't mean it's bad necessarily. And I could still get a great finish product. So then it's like, like if I have good quality tools, but not the yarn that I prefer, then I also have not the finished object I prefer. So I think yarn, <laughs> I think yarn, <laughs> both. Yeah, both, I know, <laughs> that's really funny. And I, I know some people will say tools as well. Um, your first hook set was super low priced. Yeah, that's how mine were too. And I didn't know any different and it was fine. Okay, let's see. Um, Josephine asks, how long do you knit a sock for an afterthought heel for a size nine? So do you mean the foot? So the best way that I found to figure out, well, two ways to figure out how long to knit a foot. Um, one, you can like stand, okay, st get in a room where you have a hard floor, <laughs> put a piece of paper down and trace your foot. It's better if somebody else can trace it, but if you can bend down and try to keep your foot flat, you can also trace it. This is just gonna give you a starting point. Um, and then measure your entire foot length from toe to heel and then you can subtract um, for the for just the foot portion basically you could subtract like four inches but if you're measuring like okay this is hard to explain what do i have here that i can use to illustrate i don't know but if you have like your foot 
is basically like two inches for the toe. Doesn't mean your toe is actually knit to two inches, but two inches of your foot for your toe. And then the center section is your foot and then two inches for your heel. heel. So if you have a total foot length of nine inches and you subtract four, then five inches is your foot, not including the toe or the heel. Now this is just a base, like get you started kind of a thing. So if you're doing an afterthought heel, you're gonna have the toe two inches and then your foot so you could do your total foot length minus the heel portion, minus two inches. So it would be seven inches from toe to the heel point. So I guess for you, if you're doing an afterthought heel, measure your foot and subtract two inches for the heel and that will be your toe and foot length together. Does that make sense? I need to do a video on this because I have my sock tutorials and I get asked a lot on there, how do I know where to stop? Um, and I also talk about two inches because in my head I'm thinking subtract the heel part and two inches is the toe, some portion depending on your foot length is the foot and then two inches is the heel. I hope that made sense. I don't know if it did. I hope it helped. <laughs> okay, let's see what I missed from here. Um, working on the Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knits, yes. Okay, a lot of you said you'd have good quality yarn, some said tools and some said both. Hi from Germany, what's the topic? We were talking about would you have quality yarn or quality tools, um, but we're moving through lots of things. So we're about to get into a new question here. Okay, let's see. I don't give up quality on either. I want good quality on both, yes. <laughs> okay, knitting is my escape. I want to enjoy the whole process. Yes, that's true. Um, use the fish lips kiss heel pattern for the recipe to get foot length, that's $1. Absolutely, that's true. Okay, um, I prefer the cheap boy hooks and yarn. Yeah, the boy hooks, if I, um, if I hadn't found uh, the, oh, what's the hook that I use? Is it, I can picture them in my head, but I can't remember what they're called. The Clover Amour hooks, um, boy is probably what I would use too. That's definitely my favorite, like, uh, entry level hook. Um, personal preference on foot length is critical too. I like negative ease of 10%. That's a good point. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to say the other, the, the absolute best way to figure out foot length is to knit a sock starting at the cuff, because then you can do the cuff. You can, um, you can put in, like, if you want to do after thought heel, you can put your waist yarn in, you can knit like maybe two or three inches on your foot because nobody's foot is that small if you're an adult. Um, I guess not, not nobody, but most people need at least like four or five inches in their foot. Um, and then you can go ahead and stop and do the afterthought heel before you complete the toe and you'll be able to try it on. So that's the absolute best way to get the most accurate um, is to stop before the toe, put the heel in and try it on. And then for the rest of your socks, you'll have a number like this is how many rows that I typically do for my foot. So that's really helpful. <clears throat> Someone on Facebook shared a chart for knitting different sizes. It's broken down from leg, heel flap, heel toe, and total foot length. Yeah, Google that, that's a good idea. Okay, yes, Clover Amour, thank you so much. Do you have a good toe up vanilla sock pattern? I have a size five and a half shoe. I wanna start scrappy Sunday socks. Um, I have, I think on my blog from a couple of years ago, I have my toe up, sock recipe i think i think that i do have that so maybe just google like nitty natty toe up sock and see if that's on there <laughs> i think i might have that okay rebecca does this a similar thing wait subtract the same length as my toe so if my toe is a, an inch and a half then i subtract an inch and a half yeah, that's a good point. I think the two inches thing comes to give you negative ease, like somebody was talking about. So it's not an, like my toes are not two inches, I don't think, I don't know. My toe, I have some long toes, which is <laughs> nobody needs to know about. Okay, autocorrect strikes again. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, all right, do, 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 do. what? knitting yarn 
be is best? Is that the question, Caroline? What knitting yarn is best? Hmm. I my favorite kind of yarn. My preference is fingering weight yarn. 75% merino, superwash merino, and 25% nylon. That is what a lot of socks are, and that is the kind of yarn that I like for the past at least three years. I think that's my preference. Okay, I just got my first yarn in needles. What is a good first project? What do you guys think is a good first, first project? We need to help. We need to help. Um, I can't read that. It's too small. But um, what was your first project? What's the first thing that you make? I personally think that anything that is square or rectangular and flat is a good first project. So whether you want to go small or big, go small, do a dishcloth, go bigger, do a scarf, go really big, do a blanket, whatever you want, as long as it's square and or rectangular and flat, you are good to go. What was your first project? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Cowl, cowl. Okay, that's really funny. My husband just came in here. He says, what do you want me to bring you for lunch? <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Can you, guys, can you hear me right now? Are you listening to me? Um, what do I want for lunch? Uh, I don't know. Where are you guys? What are you going to get? You should just pick for me. <laughs> Everyone's like, can't LOL. Um, shawl, shawl, dishcloth. First project was a triangular shawl. Wow, you guys are doing shaping in your first project? That's impressive. My mother-in-law was trying to convince me to get the ergonomic hooks. Oh, okay. You don't crochet enough and it would feel weird. Yeah, I like the, the armor, amours because they're flat, so they don't have a groove or a curve very much, and so they're pretty comfortable in your hand. Okay, so first projects. Dishcloth, scarf, something rectangular, triangular shawl using bulky yarn. Scarves take too long. That is a really good point, Danielle. Practice knitting, purling, and decreases. Totally. Scarf utopia. Oh, that's, I haven't heard of that pattern. A headband, it's quick and you feel great to finish something so fast. That is a good idea. Hats, dishcloth. My first project was a big cover for my bed. Oh my gosh, wow. Okay, I'm new to knitting, shawl, blanket, dishcloth, yes. My husband knit rounds on looms. Okay, yeah, headband, that's a good idea. Something small does give you that gratification and hopefully encourage you to continue knitting for sure. <clears throat> Okay, I don't know if my husband is still here, but um, I don't know what I want for lunch. <laughs> Something delicious. Okay, um, your first project was a sweater. You recommend something smaller. <laughs> good idea, good idea. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna try to, I've been really slow on my questions and it's already 145. How does that happen? I could just talk for ages. Okay. Someone asked, what tips do you have for someone just starting a cleaning and decluttering plan? So if you don't know, I have another uh, lifestyle YouTube channel as well in addition to knitting. And I focus on like cleaning, organization, productivity. So my suggestion would be to go over there <laughs> and see some of those videos. I did one recently called like, um, like 100 decluttering 100 things in my house and I talk through all a bunch of areas where it's really easy to find things to get rid of um, like your purse your bedside table I would start in easy areas that will build confidence in decluttering instead of going like straight for your closet or your kitchen or places that are hard I would start in an easy area and also just give yourself instead of a an area goal like I'm gonna clean the entire bedroom today that's very overwhelming I would give yourself a time goal I'm gonna spend 15 minutes decluttering my bedside table today and that's gonna make you feel really good and confident and you can like build up from there so head over to oh my channel is called this and Nat. so head over to this and Nat to get more like inspiration but those are my quick tips for you for decluttering I love decluttering so much fun Okay, that was your question. Wait, Courtney, what was your question? The decluttering one or the one for the first project? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, can't just pick something up and surprise me, but not Taco Bell <laughs> in case we get that later. 
because if you guys didn't know, Taco Bell is discontinuing some of their menu items. And so you have to make sure to go and get it before they're all gone in, I think, mid-August. Okay. Kent, get her a Whataburger. She needs energy for Pokemon. <laughs> we had, um, we were Pokemon hunting yesterday and we got burgers for lunch and they were delicious. Okay. I'm knitting on a bathrobe out of Froti yarn. What's the weirdest yarn and project you have made? Oh, I love that question. Okay, you guys, please answer. What is the weirdest yarn and project you have made? That is so much fun. What is the weirdest thing that I have made? Hmm. I have knit like a bralette before, which is not that, I feel like it's not that weird. For me, it's a little bit more like edgy because I'm not super edgy, but probably not that weird in the grand scheme of things. Um, the weirdest thing that I have made, I, I knit a um, placemat for my dog <laughs> recently. I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are funny. A dog bed from homemade t-shirt yarn, Danielle. That is so awesome. A crochet knocker for a friend that had a mastectomy. Okay, Mish um, Bella, 17, I have, I know exactly what you're talking about. I have made a lot of those. I, um, I don't know if I ever crocheted one, but I did several of the knitted ones and donated those. That's awesome. Remember the scarves made from the lacy yarn that were pop popular years ago? Heather, are those the ones that like the yarn like spread out and you like stuck your needle into them? Because those were awesome and horrible at the same time. <laughs> um, knitted knockers for my sister. Okay, if you don't want to know what a knitted knocker is, it is a um, a knitted like breast prosthetic, basically. I don't know if I'm saying prosthetic right, um, but apparently they are much more comfortable than the silicone ones. Um, not as hot, not as heavy, not as sticky, and so they have become very popular. Um, I, I shouldn't say popular. They have become a really good solution for people who have had mastectomies. Okay, um, my friend asked her to make a dog snood for fall. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is so awesome. I love that. A mochi mochi bed, bed bug pattern. In case you guys can't tell, it's really hard for me to talk <laughs> sometimes. A dog jacket with fun fur. Whoa, Gina, that is interesting. A dog jacket with fun fur. I bet it was adorable. Um, let's see. The weirdest yarn was meant to felt on purpose. I made a basket and threw it in the washer and it didn't felt. <laughs> uh oh, that's, that's usually the opposite of problems that people have. That's so funny. Okay. I love that. That was a really good question. I can't remember who asked that, but that was a really great question. Eyelash yarn is the weirdest yarn you've ever tried to use. Yeah, it is. It is very weird feeling. I don't really like it. Okay, let's get into some fun questions here. I, this is one of the uh, personal ones that I saw. Why did you and Kent have such a short engagement? So um, Kent is my husband. He's the one trying to figure out what I want for lunch. We have been married for three years. It was three years on Wednesday. Um, and we were engaged for four months, which is a pretty short time. Um, so the reason, I guess, there's no real like particular reason that we were engaged for a short amount of time, but really we just didn't have any reason to wait to get married or any need to wait to get married. Um, since I'm a teacher, summer was a really good time since Kent works in sports. Summer is a really good time before the fall starts. So we were kind of looking at like either getting married in July or waiting an entire year because we got engaged in March waiting an entire year for spring break so that we could go on a honeymoon. And I was like, no, mm -mm. let's just get married. So everything fell into place really great for us. We didn't have like a, a particular venue that we just had to be married at. I mean, we just want, honestly wanted to get married um, and we wanted to be able to live together. We were very traditional, so we just, we just wanted it to happen and so we made it happen. And honestly, four months, I could have done three. <laughs> I feel like that we had everything ready and done and we just wanted to get married and start our lives together. So there's no real like reason that we 
had a short engagement, but we had also been talking about marriage for a long time. So I think that once we got engaged, there wasn't a lot to like, we weren't talking about a wedding, just marriage in general, like we were ready. So that's why, that's why we had a short engagement. I think I'm having the longest engagement ever, almost three years. Oh, I'm sure there are lots of people that have been engaged. <gasps> Seven years. See, people have been engaged longer. Yeah. And now it's so hard. It's like if you want to have a big wedding, it's not really like a great time to do that. I know that's terrible, but it's hard because you just, you know, gathering people together right now is just a challenge. Okay. Let's see, a good yarn in Sarasota, Florida. I think I've been to a good yarn in Sarasota, Florida. Okay, uh, hi, Carrie from Philadelphia. I want to try color work socks. Is there a good first pattern to start? Um, that's fun, color work socks. The, a pattern that is coming to mind, I know it is by Wendy and what is it called? It's like, they're like a window panes. I think you use a self-striping yarn with a solid. So the self-striping is like the windows and then the solid makes like the panes. It's a really cool effect. But I think they're called paint box, uh, paint box socks. Is that right? I, I don't remember. I think it's something like the paint box socks. That's a really good um, color work pattern. Okay, let's see. So, uh, Sue has only engaged her husband for a couple of weeks. See, there are shorter engagements out there. Been married for 16 years now. That's amazing. Got engaged in March and married in August. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Um, dating in quarantine is a time as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I have some friends who are like, this is really hard. <laughs> um, been married 11 years with your husband for 12. Yeah, it's just, it's so funny. Like there's no, like, did I think that when I was in college that I would meet someone and get engaged and get married so fast? No, I didn't, but it just happens sometimes. Okay, um, <laughs> you guys are so funny. Okay, Jessica, we really need to, t says we really need to talk more. Well, yeah, let's talk more. <laughs> um, paint pan socks, are they the paint pan socks? Maybe, I don't remember. Ugh, I don't know. Okay, Jennifer, the last important things we organized one month before we were married. Oh yeah, that's hard. Okay. Aw, Linda, you know what? It doesn't matter when you get married because if you're with the right person, it's just, it's fine. But I'm excited for you. It's, it is nice to, I think, have the wedding behind you because it's like, you know, anticipation for an event. It's, it's a lot of work. Okay. Let me see if I can find another question. Okay. This one, I think I saw you on here, Heather. What, um, what is one thing you are looking forward to most about going back to work? Um, so I tried to think about this beforehand, but I did not come up with a solution. I mean, I guess I'm, if like I didn't have to go back to work, that would be okay with me. I do really like my job. Um, like it's a great job. It really is. Um, I really like my coworkers. So I think that's what I'm looking forward to the most is getting to like, I like being in meetings with my coworkers. They're funny. Like I just, I like the work that we do. Um, and getting to chat with people again is going to be fun. It's going to be like, there's a lot of stress because things are so different um, now as a teacher. Um, we're gonna be virtual for the first month at least until September 8th. Um, and if you, I think I said this on my Instagram, but we're actually starting back earlier. Like the first day of school is a day earlier. And then the first day for teachers at my campus is two days earlier than anticipated. So I'm going back to work this week instead of next week. So yeah, that's very stressful, but at the same time, it's not because I feel very blessed that I do have a job right now 
and that I have a job where I can be safe at home. So I really know that I have like nothing to complain about and I have a job that is awesome and I love the people that I work with. So I think I'm looking forward to just having people that I can chat with again. Um, that is going to be the best part. Um, cause I, I mean, I have been working all summer, like every day I've been super, super disciplined, but it's a different kind of work. And you know, it, it, I feel very valuable, very valued at my work. And that's really nice. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay. There are, people are giving suggestions for the color work socks, several patterns that I've seen. So thank you so much because I often forget my mind blanks when somebody asks a question. Like I know all the details, but not the name of something or all the details, but not the topic. And I'm like, why does that happen? <laughs> okay. Nick, you're trying to knit a jacket for your cat. Where do you start? That's a good question. Maybe you should measure your cat and see what size. I've only seen um, dog um, sweater patterns. Do cats wear clothes? That's my first question. Follow-up question, do cats wear clothes? That's what I wanna know. Okay, um, Amanda says she's a music teacher and you're going back full virtual until October. And you have already started, what? Oh my gosh. I do miss being in person, I know. Uh, Linda says, I think we should do a Zoom again. I might have an announcement on that this week. I haven't decided quite yet. We'll see. <laughs> okay, you have an important job. Not everyone is cut out to teach. Well, I was not cut out for the classroom, so now I'm an interventionist because that is hard, hard work. Nick, you are really funny. Your cat is allergic to wool, but he is a chunky boy. <laughs> I know you're not asking these questions seriously, but you are making me laugh. Okay. What? Oh, okay. This is a really funny one. What is the story of the painting in your bedroom that, sa that is of the beach and says yarn? I meant to grab this painting. So um, it's actually in my bathroom because it's such a ridiculous painting that the only place I honestly wanted to get rid of it when we move, we're getting rid of it. But I went to one of those like sip and paint places for somebody's bridal shower. It was really fun. And the scene was a beach, mostly sand with like a heart drawn in the sand. And then they were like, write whatever you want to put on the inside the heart. And I, my mother-in-law, we were both at this wedding shower and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cheesy. I'm like, I am not putting like my husband's name in this heart. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna put toaster in there. And I was like, no, you know what? I think I'm gonna put the three things that I love most. I will put Kent, I will put toaster, and then I will put yarn. So that's literally what it said. This is like pretty beach scene. It looks pretty good. I mean, I'm really no artist, but I can follow somebody paint, painting. And then I did the heart in the sand. And then it says Kent, toaster, and yarn. <laughs> that's what it says and so I'm like this is gonna go honestly I was gonna put it in like the water closet the toilet room but I ended up just putting it in our bathroom and sometimes it's in videos or like behind me when I'm doing stories so that's the story of the painting actually somebody asked me one time where I got it from I don't think they could see that it said like very specific stuff like my husband's name I think they just saw the heart in the sand and they asked me where I bought the painting from I was like, I'm so sorry. I painted that myself. <laughs> it's, I would sell it to you, but it says some very specific things about my husband and yarn. <laughs> oh my gosh. Your cat is 20 inches in the chest. I, that's a really big cat. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so funny. Okay. You guys, it is already two o'clock. Oh my gosh. Don't get rid of the painting. Why? I really don't like it. <laughs> it was just fun. Okay, I did not get to all of these questions, um, but let's see if there's maybe one more. Um, actually, a couple of those questions I've answered in other videos, so I'm not going to answer them right now. Oh, you know what? I think, oh, I did have one more question that I know Rebecca asked. Um, and I'll answer it real quick and then I'll answer one more from the chat because this is not 
this is a quick one. Um, what editing software do I use? So, um, and I have been getting this question lately from some other people. So I currently um, film and edit on my iPhone and I use iMovie. It's free, it comes on the iPhone. Um, and so I just, I sit with my phone and I edit on it, actually in portrait mode. So I sit and I edit on it. But recently I got a computer, but I haven't started editing on there yet. I believe it's a PC, so I'm not gonna be using iMovie. I think it's called Adobe Premiere Pro. I think that's the video editing software. So that's what I'm planning to use, but I haven't started using it yet. But I think that's what it's called. So hopefully I'll be able to still film on my phone and upload it to my computer and then edit on my computer, which will make things not just easier, but also like better for my posture and just different. Um, so I'm excited. Adobe Premiere Pro is excellent. So that must be what it's called. Awesome. Okay, do you guys have any more questions? Oh yeah, the T, this is a Tennessee T. Not a Texas Rangers tea, but it does look really similar. Um, when I first moved to Texas from Tennessee, I actually was, I was, <laughs> I don't know if I said it to somebody or was just thinking it in my head, but I was like, there are so many people here that went to the University of Tennessee. <laughs> and it was Texas, it was the Texas Rangers tea. They are so similar. Honestly, they could, they're probably almost the same. I think the Texas Rangers tea comes to a point. Um, more. That's funny. Okay, I don't see any more questions. So I'm assuming we're all good to go. Um, so yes, yeah, stay tuned this week for information. I'm probably maybe going to be asking about Zoom. Um, I have an idea for that. Um, and then this week, only one video podcast. And other than that, I think that is all. We will do um, some more frequent lives on Instagram for Sock Week. We'll definitely have one during Sock Week. So that will be really fun. Okay, I saw a couple questions pop up here real quick. What do you teach? What grade? I teach um, reading. I'm a reading interventionist and I teach elementary grades and the, the grades that I work with just change year to year. Um, this year I'm supposed to work mostly with kindergarten, first and second graders, but I'm assuming that that will change because things are just going to be crazy this year. Last year I worked with fourth and fifth grade. It just changes from year to year. Um, I was wondering if I could email you to get on the tester list. I would love to test the pattern for you, but I don't use Instagram. Um, Allie, if you want to email me, my email is nittynatty at gmail.com and we can talk about that. Um, I use Instagram to um, get testers. So if you are wanting to be a tester, make sure you're following me on Instagram. That's where I do my calls. Um, you have a pair of socks in Dallas Stars yarn. Is it still available? The Dallas Stars yarn, um, possibly. The dyer is um, Rain's Obsessive Stitchery. So like, like it rains outside, R-A-I-N, S, I think R-A-I-N-S, obsessive stitchery. Um, you can message me, on, message me on Instagram and I'll give you that info. So it's possible that she'll still be able to dye it if she has the recipe. She did not make it and sell it on her site. She just made it for me, but she did say she wrote it down. This was several years ago, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, Soraya. Oh my gosh, you guys, one of my past students is on here. That's what I miss the most about school, is the kids. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. If you miss any part of this, it will be uploaded like fully later on. Give it a few hours. It comes up usually right away, but it's not very good quality and the chat isn't there. So give it a little bit of time and then you can watch the rest of it if you didn't catch it. Anyway, all right, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching, bye.